Hello, Countryside Church. This is Pastor John. I'm trying to substitute this for Sunday morning service and Sunday school. I hope that this is beneficial to you. I want this to be a good thing, and uh, I want you to all to know that I love you. I'm going to be taking my sermon or my lesson, whatever you want to say, my message from Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And uh, if you want to turn there while I'm singing, because I'm going to sing a song for you this morning, or, or whenever you're looking at this, whatever time it may be. Anyway, I want to sing to you this morning as you're looking up Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." "'Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus." Just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Yes, tis sweet to trust in Jesus, just from sin and self to cease. Just from Jesus simply taking life and rest and joy and peace. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I've proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, Oh, for grace to trust him more. I'm so glad I learned to trust thee, precious Jesus, Savior, friend. And I know that thou art with me, will be with me to the end. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him more and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. All right, I want to read to you Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. Here's what it says, very familiar verse. In fact, this may be the most well-known verse in all of the Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not to thine own understanding. I think my country, uh, well, I wanted to do something else first, just a second. Um, I came across a story about a monastery that was in Europe. And this monastery was several hundred feet up above a side of a cliff. And the only way you could get there was to be raised up in a basket by a rope. Well, a tourist went and he was riding up the side of the cliff with one of the monks from the monastery. And he got a little nervous because the trip was a little bit harrowing. And he also noticed that the rope that was pulling the uh, basket up the side of the cliff was a little bit frayed. And so he asked the monk, when do you change the rope? How often do you change the rope? And the monk said, whenever it breaks. Well, I tell that story this morning because I think my country is at a breaking point. I think we're almost there. I think a lot of people uh, are feeling as though they are walking through the valley of the shadow of death. If there ever was a time that we needed to heed the advice of the wise man of Proverbs chapter 5 and verse 3, it's now. You see, this would be a part of this week's Sunday school lesson if we were having services. But because of the coronavirus, we're not able to do so. I wonder today, however, if we who claim to be God's people are living out 
the truth that is in this verse. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thine own understanding. As I look at the United States today, I see a nation that is caught up in the fear of getting the coronavirus. Look at the way people are acting in the stores. They're hoarding toilet paper. They're hoarding bottled water. There's fighting. There's panic. These actions show me just how far from God our nation has gone. We don't trust in God as a nation anymore. If we could learn to live by Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5, then I'm convinced today that we wouldn't live our lives so full of worry and anxiety. I want us to take a few minutes and dissect verse 5. Let's look at the first phrase in verse 5. What does it say? Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. What does that mean, trust in the Lord with all thine heart? Are they just pretty words on a page, or do they actually have a meaning? But it means this. It means more than believing in God and what he says. The word trust means to have confidence in. This confidence is having assurance that leads to action in our lives. Trust here is a form of faith that causes us to boldly follow and serve. This is a trust, a confidence, a faith that will infuse our whole being. All of our knowledge, wisdom, and will should become saturated, if you will, in this action of trusting, and it produces an assurance of the Lord. Now look at the second phrase, lean not unto thine own understanding. Lean. What does that word lean mean? The word lean means incline in feeling or opinion. We would probably say today, don't depend on your own understanding. The idea expressed by the wise men here is the opposite of the first phrase, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. When one is leaning unto his own understanding, he is not trusting in the Lord. When we are born again, we are given a new heart by God. We should spend the rest of our lives cultivating a God-trusting heart. This is done by reading and meditating on the scriptures, by spending time in prayer, and by being in fellowship with other believers. This morning, I'm trying to give us some kind of a small substitute for church. I hated canceling church this morning. I just want to say this because the fellowship is so important. It's part of how we cultivate our trust in God. All these things, the meditating on Scripture, the spending time in prayer, the the fellowship with other believers, all these things tune our hearts to the Holy Spirit who lives in us. We will begin to rely less on ourselves and more on the Lord, serving him in good times and bad, in sickness and in health, in the battle with sin, and in the peace that comes from doing his will. I love 1 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 20 or chapter 1 verse 25 I should say the foolishness of god it says is wiser than men and i read that verse and i think the foolishness of god is there any such thing well when i read the verse i understand something that the apostle paul is making a joke so to speak he is saying that the things that people in the world think are foolishness because they are of God, 
Those things are wiser than human wisdom. You know, I don't know uh, how best to illustrate this, but I came across this story, and I think maybe it illustrates best how we should not lean to our own understanding, and we should realize that the foolishness of God is wiser than men. And it's this story. It's, it's a story about Reggie Jackson, the great Hall of Fame baseball player. And there was a time in his career when he was playing for the Baltimore Orioles. And Earl Weaver, the great manager, Hall of Fame manager, in fact, was the manager of the Orioles. And he had a rule that you did not steal a base unless you received a signal from the manager. Well, Reggie Jackson thought this was silly. He studied the pitchers. He studied the, the catchers. He knew he could steal. He knew when he could steal, I should say. And he understood the game. And so one day during the game, as they were playing, Reggie saw an opportunity to steal. And he stole second base. He thought he did a good job. But later, Earl Weaver pulled him aside. And he didn't say, good job. He didn't say, congratulations. He said, you stole that base without my signal. And I need to tell you why I didn't give you a signal. He said, you weren't paying attention to some things that I was. And that is this, the next batter was a powerful hitter and had a high batting average. But because you stole the base, it left first base open and the pitcher then simply walked the batter. That caused me to have to bring in a pinch hitter because we had a weaker hitter in the lineup and I brought in a pinch hitter earlier in the game than I wanted to. You see, Reggie Jackson was seeing the game from his perspective on first base, and he was looking only at the pitcher and the catcher, but Earl Weaver was looking at the whole game. And I think sometimes we get caught up in this idea of looking at our little perspective when God sees the whole thing. And that's why we need to trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not unto our own understanding. He sees it all. Trust him. The wise man knew that if we trust in the Lord with all our heart and lean not to our own understanding, we will have a peace in our hearts as well. In the book of Philippians, chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, we're told this, and I love these verses. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. I want you to notice, if you will, verse, five, verse 6. Be careful for nothing is the first phrase. And when we read that, we understand that it means don't be anxious about anything. To be anxious is to experience worry, unease, or nervousness. And the Apostle Paul knew something that we must all learn, and that is the following. When we allow ourselves to be anxious, that causes us to fear, and fear, once it matures, bring, breeds panic. The Apostle said, we can avoid all of this, by not worrying about anything, by not being anxious about anything. Does this mean, because this is the question that always comes up, does this mean then that I'm not to be concerned about anything? Not at all. But don't let your legitimate concern become a worry. How does one do that? Well, we have to read the second half of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6. It says, be anxious for nothing, 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. We need to take every one of our legitimate concerns to God in prayer. And by the way, you can do that by using scripture as well. You see, 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 7 tells us this, casting all your care upon him because he cares for you. We can cast it all on him. Let him have it. That's the idea. Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known unto God. When we start letting the circumstances of our, uh, of our life and the circumstances that we're seeing on the news and everything is bad and it's bad news, and we, it starts to dominate in our thoughts and our hearts, I would say before we let that get started, Take it to God in prayer, and in doing so, include the Word of God. You see Romans chapter 8, verse 28, what does it say? It says, all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. When we read that verse, it doesn't say that everything that happens to us is good. It says all things work together for good. So we can take that verse and when we have this thing, for instance, the coronavirus that is so dominating our news cycle and so dominating our life right now, we can take and say, Lord, I'm starting to worry about this. But you said in your word, God, be, that you said <clears throat> all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. Lord, I'm starting to worry about this, but Lord, I know that you said all things work together for good to those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So I'm going to trust you and I'm going to turn it over to you that you're going to work this all for my good. Or you could take John chapter uh, uh, 14 and verse 27. Listen to it. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Lord, this thing of coronavirus, or maybe it's financial, or maybe it's something else, is starting to dominate. But Lord, you said, let not your heart be troubled. You said, you give me peace. Lord, I'm trusting you for that. I'm going to let you have this, and I'm going to trust you with all my heart, and I'm not going to lean under my own understanding. I'm going to let you have it, and I'm not going to be troubled. You see, we need to take these things to God in prayer. And what happens? Verse 7 of Philippians chapter 4 once we do this, we're told, and the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word, peace of God, which passes all understanding, passeth all understanding, it means it surpasses all understanding. It goes far and above and beyond all that we can think and imagine. He gives us this peace. If we'll trust in the Lord with all our heart, if we'll take it and lean not into our own understanding, if we'll take it to him in prayer, if we will say, Lord, I refuse to be anxious. One of the things I've made my mind up, folks, is this. I refuse to live in fear because of this virus. I'm going to trust God. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to do the things I need to do, but I'm not going to be fearful. I'm going to trust him. I'm going to trust him, and I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. I'm going to take it to God in prayer. I'm going to give it to him. I'm going to let him take care of it. I mentioned in the beginning, in the introduction to this message, this lesson, whatever we want to call it, Psalm 23 and verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, what does it say? I will fear no evil. Why? For thou art with me. I'm not going to fear any evil because God is right there with me. No matter what happens, if I get it, if I don't, if I die, it, whatever, he's there with me. I'm going to trust him. I want you to pay attention, though, to one word in that verse. Psalm 23 and 4 again. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. The word shadow, pay attention to that word for a minute. 
I want you to pay attention. And I want to ask you this question. What do you have to have to have a shadow? Light. You have to have light to have a shadow. You cannot have a shadow if you don't have light. Light in the Bible is always akin to hope. I like the old song. And I, I struggle with all kinds of things. And I, should I do this? Should I not? I'm going to do it. I like the old song by Jimmy Dean, Big John. I like, you know, the beginning of it. Every morning at the mine, you could see him arrive. He stood six foot six and weighed 245. He's kind of broad at the shoulder and narrow at the hip. And everybody knew you didn't give no lip to Big John. I think the first verse is pretty good. I like it. But I think one of the later verses is really good. And it illustrates my point about light. Listen to it. Toward the end of the song, then came the day at the bottom of the mine when men start when when a timber cracked and men started crying and miners were praying and hearts beat fast and everybody thought that they had breathed their last except John. Through the dust and the smoke of this man-made well, there walked a giant of a man that the miners knew well, grabbed a sagging timber and gave out with a groan and like a giant oak tree, just stood there alone, Big John. Then with all of his strength, he gave a mighty shove. Then a miner yelled out, there's a light up above and 20 men scrambled from a would-be grave. Now there's only one left down there to save Big John. Did you hear what it said? With all of his strength, he gave a mighty shove. And one of the other miners, what did he say? There's a light up above. I want to tell you something today. There's a light up above. In all of this darkness, in all of this shadow, whatever you want to say, there's a light up above. His name is Jesus. Trust in that light with all your heart today. As all the world tells you that everything is bad and everything is in chaos and everything is horrible, trust in the light. Trust in the light with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. Go back to the word of God and pray the promises of God. Let God give you peace. Let him give you peace. Father, I thank you for this time that we've had around your word. I ask, Father, that you'll give strength to these that are listening to this. Help them, Lord, to understand your word. Help them, Father, to be, uh, uh, Lord, moved by this, but more than moved. Help them to have their faith increased. Help them, Father, to trust in you with all, your, with all their hearts and to lean not to their own understanding. Father, I pray these things. Lord, bless them the people watching this. Bless the Countryside Church and give my people strength. Help me to be a good pastor to them. And may this be an encouragement to them. Thank you, folks. And God bless you. I love you.